Okay, welcome back. This is episode number 24, and in this episode, we're gonna go over week 27. We end up on the East Coast for pretty much all of it. And uh, yeah, currently we're taking a load to North Canton, Ohio. Uh, so we picked it up in Santa Fe Springs, California, and we're headed to North Canton, Ohio. Uh, but before we get into that, I wanted to quickly touch on uh, my plans for the lease and next year going forward. So currently still working as a company driver for night transportation. Uh, don't intend to stay here. So I'm going to get the lease. And then after I get the lease, I'm going to drive it around for however long. Uh, work out the kinks of the lease vehicle while still working under night transportation's umbrella. Then once I'm comfortable, with the vehicle that is pretty good and whatnot. Uh, I'm intending to go get a bank loan and purchase a vehicle using a bank loan. Now that might take, I don't know, a few months or whatever, and uh, still working on how exactly I'm gonna do that, but I should be able to do that. So I am intending to get a bank loan, uh, but I don't know the exact timeline don't know when interest rates are going to drop and I can get a better interest rate, but hopefully, I don't know, maybe by the end of the year or something. So, yeah, that's, that's the basic plan. Drive the vehicle around for a little bit as a lease driver, make sure it's good to go, then get a bank loan and purchase a vehicle using a bank loan. Now, hopefully by the end of the year that can happen, but eh, I'm not holding my breath for it. It might take me next year for the interest rates to drop so you know, I can get a more favorable uh, interest rate on the loan. But either way, I'm kind of intending to stay with Knight for, until probably maybe March or something in that time range because I don't mind working for night in February and January because those are the two worst months of the year. Uh, so if I can stay with night during that time period, you, you know, it's kind of in my best interest because those are the slow uh, months and working for a mega carrier during that time period is not a bad idea. And also this gives the market more time to improve because, you know, I've been saying it again right now really bad time really bad time and I'm not so sure about leaving a mega carrier right now is the best idea uh, the lease is okay ish because you know you're still working for the mega carrier so you're still under their umbrella so it's not the worst idea at least I think it's not the worst idea I guess we'll find out but that's that's my thought process behind it but after that uh, after work for night, though, I'm intending to go to Landstar. Um, still might change my mind on that, uh, but uh, that's my plan because I'd like to start uh, getting percentage-based pay. Right now, getting paid by the mile is definitely in my favor because, again, the market is just trash. So just getting paid by the mile I think it's a good plan, I think it's a good idea, and I'm, I'm not intending to leave until things get a little bit better. But when things do get a little bit better, getting paid percentage, uh, percentage-based loads, is the way to go. So for those of you who don't know, you can get paid by the mile at some companies, so no matter what the load pays, you just get paid by the mile, that's what I'm currently doing, or you can get a percent of whatever the load was booked for, uh, and that's how you get paid. Uh, right now, I don't want to get percentage-based pay because the it's just really bad. The freight rates are really low and the fuel prices are really high. So right now, that would be a bad idea. But next year sometime, it should be a little bit better. So I'm looking to go probably to Landstar and start working for them for a while. Still debating on that though, but that's my basic plan. So, go from company driver to lease operator to 
owner operator working for Landstar. I'll have a bank loan by that time. And that's basically my plan going forward. Unless I'm just very surprised by this lease agreement with Knight and the pay is just excellent, which I do not believe it will be, I'm gonna leave Knight. This is just a temporary position while I wait for the market to improve. Um, so that's my plan. And you know, if you're looking to get into trucking, that's that's kind of the path most people will follow if you go owner operator, work for a mega carrier, and then maybe do a lease or maybe go work for another company that uh, pays more. And then if you want to, you can make a jump to the owner operator status. And that's my, uh, that's my plan. So just thought I should share those details about what the plan going forward is. And uh, that's what I'm intending to do. But for right now, just gonna stick with night, gonna stick with the lease for maybe six months or something, get a bank loan for the leased vehicle, and then after I get the bank loan, probably go to Landstar and start working that. So that's my plan. But anyways, let's go to Ohio. So after that uh, Ohio load, we got dispatched on another one grabbing uh, from that same area and headed to Sutherland, Virginia. Let's go. So we completed the Sutherland, Virginia load. Then we got dispatched on another one going from Roanoke, Virginia to Fort Redding, New Jersey. So we had a deadhead to uh, Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, so we started deadheading there and it was some pretty backwoods roads that we had to go down. Uh, the idea was to go on the 460, uh, <coughs> excuse me. The 460 uh, pretty much took you right there, but it was a pretty uh, kind of a windy, twisty road. And I had to pick up the load by 1500 that uh, that day. But long story short, I took about three wrong turns that kept compounding themselves, and I don't know what was with me. Uh, yeah, when it told me to turn left, I would turn right, and when it told me to turn right, I would turn left. Up is down, left is right, right is left. Long story short, I didn't get there in time. I just kept taking wrong turns down these very questionable truck routes, and I turned a two and a half hour drive into about a four hour drive, and I just didn't make it. So, um, yeah, but that load was going to be on this paycheck, but... I didn't make the pickup time, had to grab it this morning, which is the next day. So yeah, uh, that that's just that was just a rough one. No one to blame but myself, but yeah. So the Sutherland Virginia load is gonna be the last uh, load on this paycheck. So we're gonna get into the spreadsheet right now. Okay, it's spreadsheet time. For week 27, we did two loads. And in those two loads, we got 2,908 miles, and we were paid a total of $1,395.84 for an average of 48 cents per mile. That brings our overall to 58,124 miles, and we've been paid a total of $30,980 at 53 cents per mile. This 53 cents per mile does include things like layover and detention. If you don't include layover and detention, it goes down to 49 cents per mile. We're averaging 2,153 miles per week and our average paycheck is $1,147 at the same rate per mile. If we kept this up for a 52 week period, we'd get 111,947 miles and be paid a total of $59,665 for the entire year. And all of these numbers are gross pay. 
We've been employed 205 days, and of those 205 days, we've taken 19 days off, and we've had 30 days of layover. We've also had 11 hours of detention, and between layover and detention, we've been paid $2,316. We've spent 186 days on duty, and during those 186 days, we've averaged uh, an average of $166. So days on duty includes any days we're in maintenance or uh, getting layover or actually driving. And then days spent driving, so the actual amount of days we've been on the road driving and haven't been in maintenance or taking a day off or something is 156, and we've been paid a total of $198.59. If you're wondering what you would make in a given week, say you only work five days a week, six days a week, well, you can just multiply these numbers by five or six, and that you give you that will give you the range that you would make in a given week. So take 166 times five, that would give you roughly $800, that would be the low end, and take 198 times 5, that's basically $1,000, and that would give you the high end. So if you were to work, say, 5 days a week, you'd probably make somewhere between uh, $800 and $1,000 per week. If you work 6 days per week, uh, you'd be making, you know, probably around what I'm making right now. Uh, so that's why these numbers are here. Um, so, you know, you can just calculate roughly how much you would make based on how many days a week you work. Average load length is 612 miles, and we spend 373 days. Uh, well, we get an average of 373 miles every day we're on the road actually driving. This number is pretty low because uh, it's not that I'm not running, it's just that uh, sometimes I'll grab a load and then there will be a delay. Like, I'll grab a load, I'll drop it, and then the time between the next load, like they don't have a load ready, so I might wait like four or five hours or something. Um, for the next load, which is pretty common. So that's why this number is actually fairly low. And uh, uh, yeah, if I had my way, it, it'd be a lot higher. I, I will run you know 11 hours a day if I can, but it, it's just not happening right now. So that's, that's why that number is fairly low. Okay, yeah, so there's week 27, not a bad week. Um, hopefully uh, I don't have to have too many more weeks as a company driver. Maybe this will be my last week, maybe next week, hopefully, but I don't know. Um, we should be ready, should be ready in the next couple weeks, I would think, but I've been saying that for a while, so who knows, but all we can do is wait, but yeah, that'll do it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in this spreadsheet or any of the other spreadsheets I've done in the past, including the lease analysis, uh, they're available in the about section down below. There's also a blank template of this spreadsheet, so you can download it and use it for yourself if you'd like. And if you are interested in truck driving, there is a link in the comments section and in the, and in the about section. Uh, just click that link, fill out the information, and a driver recruiter will get a hold of you. Thanks for watching.